Hi friends, I am Olga Kirsch and welcome back to my studio. I'm so happy to see you here despite all summer break, vacations, beginning of the school year, crazy times. I guess many of you could relate. Anyway, you are very, very welcome. I welcome new members, uh, new subscribers of my channel. I'm very happy uh, to see, to say hello to those who were asking me in the comments, Olga, is everything all right with you? And I thought, yes, it's, <laughs> it's time to be back and paint all together. And for today's class, to start it easy with our new painting school year, I prepared a special lesson, a combination of drawing and painting lesson, when we paint a tilted flower. Usually we paint flowers looking from the top, and now we will use a little bit of a perspective. It's a scary word, I know, uh, but nothing will be too difficult, I promise. And I will break everything down into small little steps and following uh, my lesson you will be able to paint other beautiful flowers, uh, uh, whatever you like. Now let's start. To understand daisy and draw daisy, let's find flower center and our flower will be a little bit tilted which means we have a kind of a perspective. Firstly, we draw the middle part of daisy. And it is not round shape because of what is tilted. It's a little bit oval. And let's add the second, second circle around. And now let's outline the circle for the petals. And again, because the flower is tilted a little bit, this side will be shorter than the front side. When you make drawing, you could you know, make as much lines, as many lines as you need. Next step will be to paint a stem. That's why we need this small dot in the middle, because we firstly make an imaginary line for our stem. And then we paint the stem. Of course, you could, you could draw the line and then remove it with the riser. Now, comes the fun part, is painting petals. Petal of daisy looks like an oval with a sharp edge. This is where it connects to the pollen area. And each and every petal has some very certain folders, which we could emphasize with brush strokes or pencil strokes like this. And now let's arrange all the petals uh, or not all of them, but enough to understand how it works. As the flower is tilted, we can't see the edges of the backside flowers or uh, petals. So we just paint our oval until the line of, of this big circle and make a very nice rounded tip. Same for, for the other side. We are painting, we are drawing <laughs> an oval and then we just follow our outline. Front, um, front petals, you could add a lot of variety to your hand drawing and add some curves, for example. On the front, we could see these edges, 
So you could finish your ovals in more artistic ways. Like this. And like this. You could paint just ovals if you like, but it's always nice to add some curviness. And of course, many petals are overlapping. That's why we have an imaginary line underneath the petal and we paint the rest what we could see. Um, if you prefer to firstly draw everything and then paint, you could finish in this way, drawing all the flower. I will show you a few more petals. For example, this petal will go underneath and here will be another petal which is underneath this two. Now let's add a few details, which means brush strokes. When we will be painting with watercolor, it will be some lines on these places, just like this. You could paint as many petals as you think would be nice, will reflect your idea of a daisy. Remember to draw a few of them underneath. And try to add variety. You could make some curves, but try to imagine that your petal has logical ending at this middle area. Um, usually the greenery of daisies, it looks like a deal pot, <laughs> a deal, deal leaves, very fine lines. Mm, don't pay too much attention to this. That's the idea. You probably already recognize it. Another important thing we need to understand before we paint in is the lighting. Imagine that the sun shines from this part. You could always draw a sunshine. And this part is where sun really shines very bright. It's nice to have something rounded. I, I have just something Lego. <laughs> And when sun shines on this area, it is very light and all the rest is slightly darker. So I just mark it on my drawing. And when I will be painting watercolor, I will have my scheme right in front of me. Same with the middle part. Here will be the lightest spot of the middle part. The rest is dark. This circle is slightly lighter because it's less dense. But again, this area will be lighter and this area will be darker. So now we have our drawing ready and let's paint in watercolor. Traditionally, Daisy has yellow middle could take your yellow or sienna color and with the tip of the brush create this middle. You could leave a little bit of white space in between and remember about our color scheme. Then comes the part which is a little bit lighter and if it's difficult for you on this moment to create this difference in the lightning no problem you could always add more details later on so right now we have our beautiful middle you could switch to another bigger brush or keep painting with a smaller brush I use very diluted ultramarine blue with just a small hint of 
burnt sienna to make it a little bit dusty. I like more dusty color for my watercolors. And let's paint the petals in very loose style. I start with the tip of the brush. I will start with this petal. I apply pressure on my brush and I release the pressure. And I could make some corrections with the tip of the brush. I could distribute color a little bit. I remove the excess water on the paper towel. And that's how I shape the petal. With the tip of the brush, I could create some extra lines which will imitate these folds. So in the same way, I'm painting all the petals around. I apply a little bit more pressure in the middle, I release the pressure and I add some shaping with the tip of the brush. Firstly, I paint the petals which are on the top And I try to keep the light balance. I remember that the middle part is a little bit lighter than the bottom part. So I bring a little bit more of color to the ends. And you probably could see, you uh, realize that I'm not I don't try to copy each and every petal from my drawing. I use it a preparational uh, as a draft. But it really helps me to keep key things in mind. I like freehand painting, but it requires a little bit of thinking in advance. Uh, how to remove the excess uh, boldness of the color, for example here, wash your brush, remove water and lift the colors with clean brush. If you need to go once again, clean your brush again. Never go in the same way. So a little bit more of petals, pressure, make these um, ends a little bit um, rounded and correct with tip of the brush. You could even paint few petals just with the tip of the brush. That will make them very, very super shiny and crispy. Because in watercolor, we can't paint white. So all the white lightest areas is just our paper. Let's paint underneath. The petals which are underneath, they slightly darker. So I could apply a little bit more of pressure uh, and a little bit more of color into this shady area, but not so much. Keep it light anyway. Apply a little bit more of pressure on the petal ends and leave some areas white. Same this petal, a little bit of shades, and a little bit of light, light in here. Um, I, I'm mixing some colors in the process that adds variety in the, in my drawing, in my paintings. So you could do the same or you could prepare enough of one mix. Everything what makes your painting comfortable. Some 
spots we could hardly see just like this remove the excess color it's too bright you could go a little bit with the tip of the brush and add a few details few brush strokes which will imitate some folds on the petals don't overdo it one stroke for petal is enough and now let's paint the stem i will use phthalo green with burnt sienna it creates this nice sagey green color i look at my drawing and again i find the flower center i have imaginary line i'm not touching the paper and then i touch the paper and i paint a nice stem always try to paint your stem in slightly curvy way it looks more intricate more natural because flowers they are moving with the wind and it's just very beautiful and now you could add this greenery spot with the tip of the brush some lines here um, when you paint greenery remember that this is not our main object this is not our focal point so no need really no need to pay attention to details right here thank you so much for painting with me i am very very happy to be back to paint with you please uh, let me know in comments what you are looking for which flowers you would like to paint with me